All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our dose of encouragement for today. It's great to see you. I'm so glad that you've uh, logged in to join us for our devotional today. If you got your Bibles handy, let's open them to Acts chapter 1. We'll be looking at verses 9 through 11 here in just a moment. Who doesn't love a, a good homecoming? Uh, several years ago, we had our 160th homecoming, uh, anniversary homecoming here at Greenfield Church of Christ. It was just wonderful to think about some stories from the past and to see uh, some people who uh, who moved away, who came back to visit. And um, I, I remember when I was younger, uh, there was a time where both of my brothers were in the military. My oldest brother, David, was in the Marines, and my, my other brother, Daniel, uh, was uh, in the Army. And I remember when they would get a leave and they would get to come home for a visit. And mom would work so hard to uh, cook, cook all of their favorite foods. And uh, she would be working on the house. And there was just a sense of excitement uh, when they were coming home. That was a, just such a, such a happy time uh, when, when that, we would get to visit with them. So homecomings are... Uh, are a source of great excitement and, and a great blessing. Well, in the Bible, we read about Jesus' homecoming. He left heaven to come to this earth and live as a man to become our Savior. He was here for 33 years, and the last three years of that, he was engaged in his preaching ministry. And that ended, of course, with his death on the cross, and then after his resurrection, he continued on the earth for about 40 days and visited with his disciples and taught them many things. And at the end of that period, it was time for him to return back home to heaven to, to be with the Father again. And so the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1, verse 9, that when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. These were angels. And they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. And so these angels were there to, to tell the disciples, um, get busy, <laughs> get to the work that he gave you to do because he's going to come back uh, just as he, as he left someday. Daniel 7, 13 and 14 also provides a beautiful picture of this in a prophecy. This is actually written hundreds of years before it happened, but uh, God knows the end from the beginning. And where this tells the story from earth's point of view, Daniel 7, 13, and 14 tells the story from heaven's point of view. And there Daniel sees the Son of Man coming with the clouds, and he's brought before the Ancient of Days, and he's given a throne and a kingdom and a dominion that will last forever. And I love that phrase, he was brought before the Ancient of Days. Ancient of Days is another way of referring to God the Father. So the Son of Man was brought to the Ancient of Days. What a wonderful reunion uh, that must have been uh, for the Father and Son to uh, be together again in heaven. So here's what I want us to really think about today as we think about this wonderful event. And there's three things that, that Jesus went back to heaven to do. Three things that, uh, that started once he had returned to heaven. We shouldn't think that his ministry ended when he returned, when he returned to heaven. Um, he, that, his work was, was just beginning uh, at that point in many ways. And there are three things that uh, we can think about today, I think will give us just tremendous comfort and encouragement as we approach this day and uh, the rest of this week. Uh, first of all, Jesus returned to heaven so that he could send the Holy Spirit. At that last supper that he had with the disciples in the upper room, 
uh, it, Jesus revealed to them that he was he was about to leave them and he would he would go back to heaven and they wouldn't see him anymore uh, they they wouldn't uh, have his presence with them physically anymore but in John 16 7 through 13 he promised that when he went back to heaven he was going to send the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit would be their comforter their helper uh, he would be their guide to uh, lead them as they make their own journey toward heaven. He would bring to remembrance the things that Jesus taught them, and he would lead them into all truth. He would teach them the things that Jesus had not taught them yet. And so um, that, was a, that was a truly comforting blessing that uh, they would have in knowing that even though Jesus was going back to heaven, they weren't going to be alone, and neither are we today. So just because Jesus is in heaven, don't feel that he is far away, that you, um, that you are, that there's too much distance, you know, between us and God, because he has sent his Holy Spirit uh, to be the helper and the comforter that we need as we make this journey. Uh, furthermore, in the second place, Jesus went back to heaven to begin his work as our high priest. Now, we talked about this in my sermon on Sunday morning. My daughter, Audrey, said something to me at lunch about how she had never thought about that very much and how uh, comforting it was to her to know that, that in heaven, Jesus is asking for help for us. He's interceding for us. Uh, now, Jesus could not be high priest on earth, because you, if you remember in the Old Testament law, you had to be from the tribe of, of Levi to be a uh, high priest here on earth. And Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. But he, wasn't, he never intended to serve in the temple here on earth. He never intended to serve as a high priest uh, in that way. Instead, he went to heaven, the holy of holies, the most holy place to become our high priest. And even right now, every time we pray, he's there listening. He's been through what we've been through, and he knows how to ask for the help that we need. And we can be sure that he will provide that. In Luke's account of his ascension, I love what it says in Luke 24, 50 and 51. It says that as he was being taken away toward heaven, he blessed Oh, actually, before he was even being taken away, he blessed his disciples, much like a priest would. He blessed them. He, he uh, uh, issued uh, uh, a favor of uh, that would provide and protect for them. So he blessed them. And as he was still blessing them, he was taken away from them. And so he was still in that process of blessing them as he went to heaven. And uh, he didn't stop. And the idea is, even now, he's still blessing his followers. And then the third thing that Jesus went back to heaven to do is to take his place as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He received his throne, according to Daniel 7, 13 and 14. And he is reigning now on that throne. He has all things in perfect control. Sometimes it may not seem like it here on earth uh, from our point of view, but everything is working out according to his, his plan. We can trust that. And recently they've been uh, celebrating the platinum, uh, what did they call that? The platinum, uh, uh, per, not the per, per, platinum parade, but the platinum celebration in, in England uh, as que the Queen of England uh, is celebrating 70 years on the throne. And I heard on the news that um, there were she was not able to attend some of the events because of her health, which is understandable. Uh, you know, at her age and as many years as she's been serving, certainly no one could fault her for that. Um, but yet it does give me a different perspective on the fact that Jesus has been on his throne for over 2,000 years, and he's still going as strong as ever. As he sits on the right hand of God, his reign is just as robust today as it ever has been, and it will continue 
until he decides to come again. So we rejoice for Jesus that he was able to go home after he had faithfully completed his ministry here on earth. But also we take great comfort that because he is in heaven, he has sent the Holy Spirit. He serves as our high priest, asking for the help that we need. And he is the king of kings. He is in charge. And we can, we can trust that and put all of our faith in that. So today we rejoice and, and take comfort in the fact that the Lord has gone home. And someday he will come again to take us home as well. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, we thank you for another day and for every blessing that you've given. Every physical gift and every spiritual blessing, we know they all come from you, the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. You are the giver of every good and perfect gift. We cannot begin to say thank you enough for all of the things that you do and have done. Thank you, Lord, for your love. We love you so much. We praise you because we know there is none who is equal with you. We take comfort today in knowing that Jesus is with you at your right hand, that he is the King of kings and Lord of lords, that he is the great high priest. We're thankful for uh, your Holy Spirit that gives help and comfort. We're thankful for all of the blessings that we have through Jesus and through what he did for us on the cross. Help us to be faithful followers of him today and every day. Please forgive us of our sins and cleanse us and use us, Father, to be servants that will bring blessings to others around us and will help them to, to come closer to you. Please go with us now. Keep us always in your loving care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Good morning, Miss Eva. Hey, Sam. Uh, hey, Tracy. Good morning to everybody. So glad y'all could tune in and be here with us. And hope everybody has a great day and look forward to our next chance to have a dose of encouragement. Till then, God bless. Love you all.